On Sunday, October 10th, 2021, Pope Francis opened the two-year process for the 16th Ordinary General Assembly of the Synod of Bishops with a Mass in St. Peter's Basilica. In his homily, he asked, Are we prepared for the adventure of this journey? Or are we fearful of the unknown, preferring to take refuge in the usual excuses? It is useless, or we have always done it this way. The Synod on Synodality may not ultimately revolutionize the Church, and in many ways its outcome will depend upon the level of commitment and receptivity of the bishops and the faithful toward its success. Its success will also depend on whether it is widely inclusive, especially of those on the margins of the Church, that is, those who no longer see Church as credible and have left. In order to help the faithful develop a better understanding of synodality, the Vatican released the preparatory document for the Synod back in September and a handbook for dioceses, parishes, and groups to use for their meetings. This Synod will seek to implement more fully the Second Vatican Council's call for communion and participation of all in the mission of the Church in the 21st century. It asks what it means for the Church to journey together and quotes Pope Francis, It is precisely this path of synodality which God expects of the Church of the third millennium. Synodality speaks to a way of involving the entire people of God into the Church's life, more than a meeting of bishops ever could. The preparatory document frames this process as opening up possibilities for new ways of listening and journeying together. It is important to understand that these somewhat vague terms indicate a change in the Church's way of acting and making decisions, where the laity have been ignored or simply suppressed by those with harmful clericalist attitudes. Listening implies incorporating the laity's experiences into decision-making. Journeying together implies building bridges and ensuring no one is excluded from the life of the Church. The work of the Synod will require blending both the theological and sociological dimensions of the Church's teaching. These two dimensions, viewed together, are essential to the understanding of synodality. Sociologically, the document points to the unique challenges brought on by the COVID-19 pandemic, the ongoing abuse crisis, and clericalism. Theologically, the preparatory document also leans heavily into the Church's tradition and history, particularly the teaching of Vatican II. It goes on to describe the need for us to think about how everyone can participate in the Church's life and how all people are invited to bring their unique gifts to bear on the mission of evangelization. The document makes an historical argument when it compares the first millennium of the Church which was more synodal, to the second millennium, which emphasized more strongly the hierarchical function. The juxtaposition of more recent history with the life of the early church suggests that the structures and processes of the second millennium do not adequately respond to the church's pastoral needs in the present day. Therefore, we must shift gears and highlight the unique role of the gifts that the Spirit has poured out upon all the people of God for the benefit of the Church. The document also makes clear that any process that excludes or denigrates the contributions of the laity and consecrated religious will quench the Spirit. The preparatory document presents ten themes which shed more light on what synodality means and what it does not. The Journeying Companions The Church and society journey together side by side on the same road. These companions include those outside the Church and persons or groups which are left on the margins. Listening Speaking Out all the baptized are invited to speak with freedom and courage, that is, integrating freedom, truth, and charity. 
Consequently, the church must strive to promote a free and authentic style of communication within the community and its organizations, in the society where it is a part, and without duplicity and opportunism. Celebrating Journeying together is only possible if it is based on communal listening to the Word and the celebration of the Eucharist. Prayer and liturgical celebration must inspire and direct journeying together. They must inspire the most important decisions and promote the active participation of all the faithful. Co-responsible in the mission. Synodality is at the service of the church's mission in which all her members are called to participate. Since we are all missionary disciples, each baptized person is called to be a protagonist in the mission. The community is called to support its members committed to service in society. It is called to discern the various mission-related choices. Different traditions that constitute the patrimony of many churches, especially the Oriental ones, must be integrated and adapted with respect to the synodal style in order to produce an effective Christian witness. Dialogue in Church and Society Dialogue is a path of perseverance that also includes silences and sufferings, but which is capable of gathering the experience of persons and peoples. The Church is challenged to discover the places and modes of dialogue within the Church, taking into account the divergences of vision, conflicts, and difficulties. Promoting collaboration, she also seeks to dialogue and foment shared commitments with believers of other religions and with non-believers. With the other Christian denominations, the dialogue between Christians of different confessions, united by one baptism, has a special place in the synodal journey. Consequently, collaborative relations with brothers and sisters of other Christian denominations is important. Authority and Participation A synodal church is a participatory and co-responsible church identifying the goals to be pursued, the way to achieve them, and the steps to be taken is important. Authority is exercised in a synodal context. Teamwork and co-responsibility by the faithful is promoted. Discerning and deciding. In a synodal style, decisions are made through discernment based on a consensus that flows from the common obedience to the Spirit. Participation in decision-making, transparency, and accountability are promoted. Forming ourselves in synodality. The spirituality of journeying together calls us as human person beings and Christians, as families and communities to listen to one another and engage in dialogue. We need to ask ourselves what formation do we need for discernment in order to live in and participate in a synodal church. Synodality as a guiding principle for the future of the Catholic Church and her institutions will require greater participation from the laity in the life of the church. In conclusion, the document states that the real goal of this synodal journey is nothing less than to provide the entire church with an opportunity to rethink what it means to be a church and all Catholics are called to participate. We must see that the purpose of this synod is not to produce more documents but to make people's hopes flourish, to stimulate trust, to bind up wounds, to weave new and deeper relationships, to learn from one another. It is meant to build bridges, to enlighten minds, to warm hearts, and restore strength 
to our hands for our common mission. Prayer of Pope Francis Come Holy Spirit, you inspire new tongues and place words of life on our lips. Keep us from becoming a museum church, beautiful but mute, with much past and little future. Come among us, so that in this synodal experience we will not lose our enthusiasm, dilute the power of prophecy, or descend into useless and unproductive discussions. Come, Spirit of Love, open our hearts to hear your voice. Come, Holy Spirit of Holiness, renew the holy and faithful people of God. Come, Creator Spirit, renew the face of the earth. Amen.